Hey everyone, welcome to the first ever United Traders Market Recap. This week's topic, taper tantrum pending. Is it time to cry? I am your host, Tim. I'm here with Kevin. Kevin, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. It is Monday, October 4th. ES closed today at 4294 and NQ at 14489. Was kind of an exciting morning and then a boring rest of the day. Uh, but let's talk about our economic data forecast. Is there anything coming up in terms of macro data that is sticking out to you or that you think we should be keeping an eye on? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, so U.S. services PMI, composite PMI should come out tomorrow. Um, it should be followed by mortgage applications Wednesday morning. Initial jobless claims, continuing claims, and consumer credit on Thursday. Friday should wrap it up with a change in non-farm payrolls, private payrolls, manufacturing payrolls, unemployment rate, and wholesale inventories. Should be a juicy week ahead. All right. Fair enough. And then the segment of the week is tapering, tapering, tapering. I swear I'm going to pistol whip the next person that says tapering. Uh, before we get too deep into it, what exactly is tapering? That is a great question. Is it the boogeyman in the closet that everybody imagines it being? To understand tapering, we have to understand first what it is they're going to taper. Quantitative easing are the two words that come to mind. When COVID hit in March of last year, everyone got slammed. The whole economy. I mean, you know, small business, big business. Didn't matter how big or little you were. You were affected from it in some way, shape, or form. The Fed essentially slashed their target interest rates. They ramped up this QE, this stimulus, to shore up the markets and in turn stimulate the economy. The QE in which they enacted, it occurred in two major ways, okay? First being the increase in purchasing of treasury bonds, or USTs for short, along with the increased purchasing in mortgage-backed securities, MBSs for short. They also enacted what's called the Secondary Market Corporate Credit Facility, or the SMCCF. For short, first, let's talk about the U.S. Treasury and mortgage-backed security purchasing. Now, I assume that they're buying mortgage-backed securities and U.S. Treasury bonds because they're just extremely secure investments. Is this correct? Yes and no. So this form of QE is actually to provide the liquidity to financial markets. It's to provide backing in some way, shape, or form to allow banks to continue lending, to allow businesses to continue operating, and so on. Um, basically, since July of last year, the Fed ramped up their purchasing. They started buying $80 billion worth of treasuries every month and another $40 billion in mortgage-backed securities every month. The goal in them doing this was to essentially cap yields. It was to lower bond yields to make borrowing cheaper for everyone. The lower the yield, the lower the interest rate, cheaper it is for someone to take on a loan or borrow and, and utilize that money to, again, stimulate the economy in whichever way they deem. Now, the second portion of this QE that they enacted, like I had mentioned, was the secondary market corporate credit facility. This was an entity, okay? This, this private little group that they just created. The Fed can't legally purchase corporate bonds from companies. They can't legally purchase equities or ETFs even on the open market. I mean, it's in their structuring, they're not legally allowed to. So let's just find get, a workaround then. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Exactly. It's a backdoor, a backdoor workaround. So they, they, they gave this entity, this entity is made up of a multitude of big banks, man. It's M Morgan Stanley, Goldman, BlackRock, Vanguard, B of A. I mean, think of the big bank, they're in it. They call them eligible sellers. Okay. Okay. They, they gave this entity several trillion dollars. Um, and they essentially were able to leverage the several trillion dollars, depending on the credit rating of the bond, they could leverage it 
three and a half times, five times, and so on. So this several trillion dollars was actually between seven and ten trillion dollars when it was all said and done due to the leveraging nature. Um, it was a form of bailout. It was a form of providing stimulus to these companies that had been impacted most by COVID and even those that weren't as impacted very much. But it was approved in March of last year. They started the purchasing after funding this entity um, in April, so a month later. As of December of this year or of last year, they completely stopped. They purchased everything that they needed to purchase. Um, they were able to bail out or solidify the books on every company that they had a hand in, um, ranging from AT and T and Boeing to Apple and I mean, you name it. Everybody got a handout. Ford, everyone. Um, so they stopped December of last year, right? As of August of this year, they sold everything and or the corporate bonds had matured. So the second leg of this QE back to easing has already stopped. They've already ceased this form of easing for the economy already. Essentially, they've already begun tapering months back. Now, when we go back and discuss the treasuries and the mortgage-backed securities, that's not something that's really ever going to change. They're not, they'll never just stop purchasing these two things outright forever. They just slowly trickle down the amount of money that they actually put into them. Um, usually it's between seven and ten billion dollars a month. You know, just just little baby steps, little baby steps. You know, as, as they buy less, of course, bond prices drop interest rates and yields go up. And this is done to slow the rise of inflation at the same time. So whether history may or not repeat itself in having this taper tantrum, one must understand is that they've already begun tapering months back. This isn't anything new. This isn't anything that's unwelcome because they wouldn't do it in the first place if they didn't feel as though the economy's in good standing. Mm -hmm. you know? So I would imagine that when the Fed comes out and said, says they've be begun tapering, um, everything will kind of already be priced in. Um, but with that being said, is there a way to hedge your, your positions or is there something you should or should not be investing in? Um, due to kind of all the fear that's floating around there about tapering? That, that's actually a great question. So um, first off, I would assume that a lot of this tapering would would be priced in. Um, I mean, for God's sakes, they've been hinting at it um, for the past talking six about, months. Talking about tapering? Um, right, right. And it's just now become something that they acknowledge that guys, we really are talking about it now. We really are thinking of enacting this tapering event, which as we've discussed has already begun anyways, but I would, I would safely assume that it should be priced in and, and perhaps that's what the market is, is attempting to do now. Um, as far as protecting oneself, move away from longer dated bonds. You know, it'll prevent you from being walked into and locked into lower yields. Um, Industrials are a great, great sector to have your money into um, if a taper, taper tantrum were to occur. Uh, basic materials, uh, banks, as we know, profit greatly from higher yields, higher interest rates. Um, there's, you know, there's a good list, you know, you can work yourself from uh, to, to actually hedge yourself and protect yourself in, in the case of an actual taper tantrum. Uh, so it's it's however one would decide to position themselves. Um, you know, may, maybe wait. Uh, it, it's it's entirely up to you. But this fear of tapering that you know obviously is a topic of discussion. It's in my personal opinion, Tim. It, it's it's something that that's greatly overblown. Um, they'll never stop backing the treasury market. They'll never stop backing the mortgage-backed security market. They, they won't. But to slow the purchasing of the two down, 
it's supposed to signal the economy's on a good leg. It, it, it's standing fine and that it can handle a trickle down in purchasing of these, these two assets. Um, like I said, will history repeat itself or not? That's, that's something we're going to have to wait and see. Um, do we have that taper tantrum? That's something we're going to have to see. I myself will be on the sidelines waiting, waiting direction, um, waiting guidance from, from our beloved Jay Powell himself. So, and there you have it. Thank you, Kevin, for joining us this week. Um, so tapering the tantrum, is it coming or are blue skies ahead? We'll have to wait and find out. Special thanks to our research team, the producers, our audio and video production team, and all the team leads. Without you guys, this would not be possible. This was the United Traders Market Recap, and we will see you guys next week. Thank you.